Did you know that 80%, 80, that's eight zero percent of people misrepresent themselves? Now, not everyone's a predator. Not everyone is, you know, doing this from the jail cell. I mean, I, oh, sure, sure. I, I'm not trying to say that, but they are misrepresenting themselves on some level. Women in particular love knowing that they were committed. They were able to be in a long-term relationship. And through no fault of their own, their spouse died. There we go. I mean, we also don't know that there is no fault. (laughs) Maybe this the court made the wrong (laughs) ruling. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Silver and Sensational. I'm one of your hosts, Jessica Lynn Verdi. And with us, as always, is the magnificent, sensational silver, Lois Mills. Hello, everyone. It is I, Lois, welcoming you to this week's episode and thanking you for tuning in. Before we get started, we have to remind you that we have announced that once we hit 2,500 subscribers here on YouTube, we will be giving away the entire collection of the Jones Road Miracle Bomb. It just is a a natural glow and you're going to get all 10 colors that exist um, once we start the giveaway after we hit 2,500 subscribers. And so everybody is aware we are not sponsored by Jones Road Beauty. I'm sure that we hope that they're tuning in to us, but it's my personal favorite and I have... um, shared my find with several of my friends who in turn have ordered it and love it. So it's, and it's actually, I think it's a pretty hot item. I think Allure Beauty Magazine and a bunch of other people have given it like the 2023, 2024 award of the year. It's really great stuff. Um, it just gives you a nice glow. But at any rate, get over there and subscribe if you haven't. Share us with your friends. Have them subscribe. And as soon as we get to 2,500, Jessica, what's going to happen? You want to make sure you have the notification bell on for our channel so that you'll be the first to know how and when yeah. to enter that sweepstakes. So you want to stay tuned for that. We're so excited to give it away. I'm frankly jealous, but we're excited to give it away to you folks. Last week, I we did what I just thought was a just simply wonderful episode for any folks out there who were looking to dip their toe back into the dating world after a long-term relationship, after not feeling ready to date, um, a divorce, let's what have you. All those people that were like, I'm going to do this, but have found that the dating apps or meeting somebody in person was... Um, overwhelming. So you gave oh, yeah. all, the, yeah, you gave all the tips to folks to kind of ease the transition there, which I think makes today's episode a natural next step for anybody worried about being safe while approaching online dating. I've met someone online. Granted, we weren't on a dating app, but it, it can happen. But what we want to do today with this episode and with the advice that Lois has is to make sure that your success story is a safe one. So Lois, how can we help our listeners and viewers stay safe while dating online? Okay, firstly, I would like to say that it is so important for you to be safe while, on, while you're doing online dating. Um, I know sometimes it gets very exciting when you see a lot of interesting men or women or you're on Bumble and you get to choose all these men or women, but don't get carried away without keeping in the back of your head that you need to be safe. So reserve that enthusiasm for the time after which you have a pretty good feeling that the person you're dealing with is legit. I think that is so important and advice I would have needed to hear because you can get swept up oh, in sure. the feelings of now I'm flirting with somebody. And, oh, yeah. And boy, can I conflate, you know, 
sexual titillation to love as well. And that will cloud my brain. So it's not, it's, it's like, it's suspending. That's all. The, the falling part. That's all. Just suspend. Earning the trust. I love that. Exactly. Don't be, don't be. Now, you may be putting your toe in the water, but don't be jumping off the diving board into, oh, I think I'm in love with this guy. So right. let's, let's exactly right. start with how to be safe. So firstly, let's talk pictures. Okay. So I mentioned in the last episode that you'll want to take new and current pictures. Now, it's, it's not only so that you're representing yourself honestly, uh, but also you want to show yourself in the best light. But more importantly, you don't want to be using your pictures from your social media because that allows someone to reverse image you and find out more about you than you are willing to or should be willing to share at this time. I'm blown away by this piece of information yeah. because I consider myself a little savvy and I never thought well, about that. It, 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 it is a very easy thing to do. I mean, listen, go ahead and do it with, you know, when you're looking at whoever it is you're looking at, you know, see how simple it is to, you know, to see if they use, I mean, you could use it to your advantage. I'm just telling you, don't put wow. yourself in that situation. I love that. Okay? And, you know, it it's not so that you can deter potentially Mr. or Mrs. Right. It's so that you don't help the absolute psychopaths that are are 100 predators i should say that are on those sites as well you're not giving you're not giving them any absolutely absolutely so wow so then you also want to be aware that you don't want to be taking pictures of yourself in any sort of place that would give away your location so you know if it's a note if it's a, a notable place or you know um in front of a street sign by your home, I think, by, which is important. By your home with your address on your mailbox. Well, that, but I guess like you could go, if you're if you're in, let's say you visited a different state and you're at a famous, you know, you're at Serendipity in New York, you don't necessarily not have to post that. Right. But if you're a frequenter of a specific restaurant that is well-known or just Googleable, that's the one you want to avoid, I think. that That's an important distinction. Absolutely. And then uh, another idea is um, to, and this is gets a little trickier because I think it's not wise to share your social media handle until such time as you are moving your conversations along and you're feeling comfortable with this person. You've done the reverse Social media yeah, look up on and that. And some of the and... other things I'm about to suggest, but you <laughs> but at the same time, uh, you know what? Turn it around and check them out. So you're suggesting um asking them for social media? Uh, well, I said this is gonna be a little bit awkward because you know, you can't say, um, by the way, what's your social media handle? And they, and then of course, someone else is going to come, you know, he's, he or she's going to come back and say, well, what's yours? And you're going to say, well, I don't share it. You know, don't put yourself in that situation. And, you know, for the most part, most people don't get real clever about their, their handle, you know, so sure, most people exactly just right. use their name. So Give it a try. Um, <laughs> so you're saying either by sleuthing or other ways, try to assess their social media presence. Yes, but do not give yours away. Yet. Yet. See, this is important for sussing out whether that person's married or has an alternate account or what have yeah. you, because that also is out there too. Right, right. Yeah, that sounds like really good advice. So what's next? You want to be able to block and report suspicious users. But in order to do that, you have to do a little homework first, which comes at the time that you're reviewing the sites that you're thinking of going on. And so if you want to go back to the episode we just did where we shared the Forbes list of the 10 best uh, or nine best 
dating apps for seniors, you're going to look at those, go, oh, maybe that applies to me, and then check their reporting policies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, because you do want to know that you're able to block the person, that you're able to report the person, and I think... You know, so I I would just make sure that you know what their policies are regarding this before before you choose the site and go through all of the work it entails with your profile and all the other things that you need to do to get started. So I would I would have never thought of that. Well, I would start with that. It's beautiful. It's and a really good advice. Yeah. If any of what I'm about to tell you occurs, this is when you want to report and block someone. Firstly, if anybody asks you for money, it's more than a red flag. I don't even know what to say about it. You know, this is, you know. I can only imagine, though, that people get really wily and wait until you've talked to them for a while and then sneak in the money request. I would think so. Which makes it a little more insidious and harder to catch. Or maybe you've already, this is why you were talking about at the top suspending your faith in this person and you're falling in love so that you're not going, oh, well, but Jerry needs the money. (laughs) You know what I mean? Please. Um, Now, another, and and I know this this is going to shock you. He claims to be recently widowed with children. I don't understand this, Lois. What is the red flag here? Are you serious? Okay. I'm serious. Okay. Well, how else to pull on a woman's heartstrings? Number one. Number two, most people know that widowers are more susceptible to being in a committed relationship because they need somebody in their life. Meaning... At post the death of their loved one, they're more, they're more likely to, to seek another committed relationship? Is that what Oh, you mean? absolutely. I see. I, so mean, yes. a, a I widow- mean, I know men do this. I don't know that women do this Well, as much. I don't know. I really don't I'm know. I'm sure that's but not I, fair for me to make that I, distinction. I, don't, I, think, I think you're right, but I don't have any real statistics to know that. But I... So you're saying... Well, okay. Do you out and out report them right away? No, I mean, what I'm saying is... You it's know, a red flag. It's a red flag. Gotcha. It's a red this flag. Is, this is mind-boggling to me, but it makes so much sense because a, a nefarious person is going to do their best it's a, to It's a good gimmick. In. It's a good <gasps> gimmick. I am blown away. <laughs> okay, it's just a good gimmick. Blown away. <laughs> so, you know, just put a red flag there. I know... I hate people. I hate people. <sighs> I know that many women find widowers more attractive than, say, divorced or never married. So, uh, actually, I do know this uh, statistically, which I couldn't give you exactly the numbers, but women find this is why women like to hit on married men, like at my age, let's say, because they're tested and the woman, they got married. There's this. Past, like, marriage number two, the man's no longer attractive. So we love, women in particular, love knowing that they were committed. They were able to be in a long-term and relationship. And through no fault of their own, their spouse died. There we go. I mean, we also don't know that there is no fault. <laughs> Maybe this the court made the wrong ruling. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, we can do a whole number. I mean, I have a friend who... Jesus. Was a funeral director, and she would tell me that, you know, women would just come to the wake and shake the hand, and there was their telephone number inside their hands. So I, women are just as bad, and I, like whatever shade we're throwing toward men, holy moly! Or, or they, you know, uh, I mean, remember there was there was a Seinfeld episode where Elaine was reading the obituaries to, <laughs> to see who That's exactly right. who That's died exactly right. in New York so she could get, get in on their apartment. Wow. So, you know, there are women that do that for widowers. I mean, wow. or I can't tell you when I was living in Palm Beach, the stories I would hear from the 
men there about women bringing casseroles over, and the one man decided he was going to pursue the one lady who did not bring him a casserole. So <laughs> the levels, the levels of wow. I mean, reading the obits got to me, but at any rate. Um, so we've got some red flags that you really want to look out for in addition to what I've just said. And that is, after pressure to giving you money, how about pressure to give, give, you your, uh, give them your phone number or to talk outside of the app? There you go. Too That's soon. Interesting. Too, 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 too soon. Or someone that claims to be from the U.S., but... Uh, it, and is abroad for some reason, you know, they're working, blah, they're whatever. It's, you know, that's another, you know, I'm not so certain about that. These are red flags. Yeah. I think these maybe at first blush seem a little obvious, but at the same time, if someone has like curried favor with you, yeah. you might be quick to uh, agree to the situation that they're explaining. It, exactly. Now, you know, Asking for your social security number, credit cards, addresses, geez. Now, at that point, if if you're not suspicious, you better go check yourself out. I mean, anyone that starts asking for that kind of information and you're not saying, whoa, I think I need to report this. Uh, even if you don't want to report it, please at least block them. Well, I mean, you'd be doing society a favor if you report them yes. genuinely. Yes. It doesn't mean this person can't create a, another account, but you, obviously you have already received the red flag and you're not going to continue. I mean, at this point you really have to be questioning their legitimacy is um, certainly enough to block them and with due cause reporting them. I think that, I think that makes a lot of sense. Do yourself a favor and check people out. Did you know that 80%, 80, that's eight zero percent of people misrepresent themselves? Now, not everyone's a predator. Not everyone is, you know, doing this from the jail cell. I mean, I, oh, sure, sure. I, I'm not trying to say that, but they are misrepresenting themselves on some level. So that's interesting. Is it, it's willful or is it like delusion? I, I, but I, Could it be a healthy I, dose of both? <laughs> I think in trying to present themselves in the best light, they may decide that their own best light isn't enough. So they're going to embellish. Let me offer you this information to uh, bolster that claim. There are people that either rent their dogs or men who go onto Craigslist asking to borrow dogs to take pictures for profile pictures because pictures with animals or kids do better. Jeez. So that's a misrepresentation right there. And all they have to say, quote unquote, is I look at this dog I ran into. You know what I mean? But of course, it's it's the oldest trick in the book. I'm the uncle watching the kid while taking him for a walk at the grocery store. You know, so I can I I see the validity the validity in this claim. Yeah. So wow. you know, going back to again trying to uh, check out their social media sites, but also I happen to do this. I I I actually pay every quarter to because I sub. Subscribe to an online people checker site. Ooh, this is interesting. Yes. I mean, there's plenty of them out there. And, um, you know, the unfortunate thing is, you know, somebody who is really, really, really um, a bad person uh, can, there, there is, uh, there's um, apps that can remove you basically from all of that stuff. But let's just say we're talking about the average bloke who's online, who maybe is married, but is looking for, you know, some action. So this is a way, at least, of sorting out that kind of individual. And so I... So you're using this people searcher app to 
To what? What are we looking for? Well, you're looking to see, you know, where they've lived, ah. um, who their relatives are, spouse, hmm. whatever. Sure. You know, it's just, it gives you enough information um, that, for you to be able to see if what they're claiming to be is who they are. You know, I don't think this is too much because at first blush, I might be like, ooh, this is a lot of trouble to go through. But I think this is also something you employ once you've started to really get along with this person. You've mass messaged each other for three days or something. Because I'd rather be a little overprotective and alive than a little too trusting well, and not. Listen. We said in last week's episode that when you start online dating, you're taking on a job. Right. Now, oh. part of the job is to protect yourself, and that should, okay. be, that should be your number one priority. I love this. Okay. I think that's right. And, and so, so it might cost you you know, 50 bucks every three months or whatever to add to the cost of the dating site, you know, at least you know you've done due diligence. I mean, it doesn't, there's no guarantee, but at least you've done due diligence and God forbid, if, you know, you do find somebody who's a fake, you say, well, I did everything I, that was within reason so instead of feeling like you've been completely duped because you've done nothing to protect Correct. yourself. Correct. Correct. So that's that. Now. I love that. Yeah. But I think I've, I've beat that subject to death pretty much. So another thing is to get personal, but not too personal. Okay. That, so yeah, I think, I think we do need to get into this because you might want to be trusting and put yourself out there and tell people about something. So how do you do In that? small increments. Okay. You know, you can ask about dating history. Now, again, anything you ask, you've got to be willing to answer for yourself. There we go. Yes, that's exactly right. So, you know, I don't think, you know, um, talking about, well, I've been on uh, dating sites before, blah, blah, you know, these kind of things, you know, your dating history, um, hobbies, all right? You know, sure. unless they're, you know, truly so specific that someone can narrow it down, um, that would be a pretty personal but not exposing. So... There's a, a horror story I remember reading about on a Facebook group um, where a woman was having trouble litigating an issue with a man who stalked her from a dating app where all she did was mention to him, you know, like dating apps usually can match with somebody within a five mile radius, 10 mile radius. Right, so right. he had matched with her within a similar radius. She mentioned that she does hair. And he triangulated and ruled out all of the surrounding hair salons in order to find the one that had an employee with her first name and showed up at her work because the conversation didn't go past one interchange exchange and he felt like he didn't get a good chance enough with her and he felt entitled to that. So... <laughs> I mean, now there's a man that did his homework. There we go. There we go. Right. So be like this psychopath. Uh, um, I think what struck me about that story, Lois, is I would never have thought to say I'm. Don't tell someone I'm a hairstylist. I I agree with you. I <sighs> wouldn't either. I mean, that's you know. But I guess if um, your mind thinks along those lines your mind is you know um you know when we don't think that way it's awfully hard for us to imagine someone thinking that way so that's exactly right that's why we share this and i think that's why, why that's in why particular that's do why this. we're doing this today because right i'm gonna assume most people out there are not thinking along these lines so i'm we're just throwing this stuff out to you to just kind of, you know, you've heard it, put it in the back of your head. And, uh, hey, you know, hopefully you never have to be part of those stories. 
but at the very least, you, you've been made aware. There's one other piece of advice, too, that I would give that some Facebook groups exist for cities or major metropolis areas where don't date this guy or or they've gone on a date with somebody or had a very bad experience and it's a safe space for women to share their bad experiences again i'm we're not trying to be alarmist or like um everybody is bad every man is bad but that sort of network of women sharing ideas and information i feel is very valuable yes. so lois now that we've like Kind of did the reverse picture on the guys. He gave us our Instagram and he was cool that we didn't give him ours. And, you know, he didn't show up on the people searchers as married or, you know, he didn't ask for your social security number. (laughs) What next? I think it's a really good idea to plan a video date. This is brilliant and something I never thought. I I was doing online dating at the time where people weren't like still weren't Zooming quite yet, but we could have FaceTimed. Well, I just think, you know what, why not? This way you, you know, you haven't put yourself out. It's beneficial for both of you. And, you know, and it's sort of you are who you say you are. And, um, you know, you can see if you're at least physically and maybe emotionally connected. Might be too soon for that. But, you know, you can also use it as an opportunity you know, to plan a really fun first date. Uh, Ooh, so you actually have set a goal yeah. to accomplish yeah. rather than let's just meet and have nothing to talk about. Exactly, <gasps> exactly. I love this yeah. idea. Yeah, you know, I, I, think it's, I think it's a wonderful way to, um, it's sort of a pre-ice-breaking moment, so to speak. You know, you've already chatted with them, you've seen them, you've, you know, if, if it's just a better way to ease in to the, to a first date and it gives you an opportunity to, um, talk about, you know, that what you put on your, on your profile, you know, it, it, it'd be a good time to see, you know, and to reiterate what you're looking for. Wow. So it seems to me like the the timeline here is you've matched with somebody, Mm -hmm. you've flirted a little bit, you've not given them your phone number, you've but you still are interested in them, right? And you offer a Zoom date, which is low stakes because they can make the Zoom link and put it in the chat and you don't need to give them your their email address or something like that yeah i mean you know listen you if you don't know how to do it google will let you know that's exactly right that's exactly right we all have someone in our life too that will um that knows how to do it that knows how to do do that and I, I love this. I think you could also make it a little extra cute, too, where both of you go to your favorite coffee shop, get your favorite drink, and then come to the video chat and have that while you're planning your first date or something like that, too. Yeah. So it's, this is a wonderful piece of advice. Let's say that goes well. Okay. Now the day or evening comes. So firstly, make sure the date is at a public place. This is exactly right. And. Have your own transportation. And if you're going to Uber or Lyft or take a taxi, I would make it very clear that that is how you re- you are returning as well. So um, there's a feature on Uber and Lyft where you can share your trips with a loved one. So good because you want to be able to do that. You as well. also want to share your location, which you can do on your phone. That's exactly right. With a friend or family member. And while you're doing that, you know, this way they ed- can find out where you are. You can That's turn right. it off after you get home. But it's just to let someone know and keep track of where you are. And you can have a code with that person as to uh, they can help to get you out of a bad situation. So it sounds like, you know, 
when you go on a first date, it's a blind date, or you go on the first date with Charlie from accounting, and you call a friend and go, oh, you know, your friend calls halfway through to give you an excuse to leave. It sounds like that. Yeah, but that's exactly but right. Level, that's exactly right? right. You have the text when you go to the bathroom, like, you know, save me <laughs> or whatever. Um, that's right. And you don't even wow. need the text. You could just say one, two, three, four. Exactly. And they know what they're expected to do to get you out of that situation. Yeah. So for anytime I'm going into a, an unknown situation, whether it's a date or I'm going to go pick something up that from somebody from Facebook Marketplace or whatever, I give the full list of information, a screenshot of the person and the address to my a friend or a loved one. And I think you do that here. Yeah. I'm going to this restaurant Great, uh, yeah. at this time. Here's the picture of the dude. Here's the person, their name. You know, I th- I think why not? Listen, I'm sorry, but the world is not a very safe place for women. And if we want to be independent, which <laughs> is one of the things we tell it on this website, that's how you do it. You actually be independent by protecting yourself. You protect yourself. So another point to take is to enlist the help of the bartender or waitress. All you need to do is get up for a moment and with a smile and with maybe your glass in hand to get ice from the bartender and say, this guy is a problem. Keep an eye out for me. The guy can be a problem. Say, do you see what I'm saying? I found... I've I've done it... Also, outside of a date where I was being bothered by somebody mm-hmm. and said, I need such and such help. I'm not going to go to the car alone. You know, um, you have, we don't, sometimes women in particular don't do this because we're afraid of making a problem. We're embarrassed or oh. I'm, I don't want to embarrass that man. I'm alive today because I am not afraid to embarrass that man for how they're making me feel. Well, I can tell you. Um, for many, many years, uh, for actually most of my life, you know, I would go to restaurants alone and often, rather than sit at a table, I would sit at the bar and have a meal at the bar. And it was very clear to the bartender that, you know, especially if I went to a place more than once or twice, that I wasn't there to pick anybody up. So if there was someone, you know, would say, to the guy, uh, to the bartender, or would send her a drink, he'd say, let me ask. Beautiful. And he would wow. come over and say, to, or she, if it was a, a gal bartender, so that fellow at the end wants to send you a drink. Do you want to accept it? That put it in my hands. Oh my God, that's so much better than just being served it. And now this guy has to come over. <gasps> Lois. Yeah, so I mean that's br- that's good on them though. Yeah, truly. also, but you know, you also can, you know, I mean, it, clarify that you with can get the it staff. clarified. And as I say, if you know, if you've been there before and they know you don't want to accept any drinks with anyone because you don't want to be talking to anyone, fine. But the point is that you have to really think about enlisting the help of people who see nonsense every single day and night. They are, I... You spoke about someone that, you know, stiffed you with a $5 tip after whining and dining this lady for how many hours and spending hundreds real, of dollars. You get a real good cross-section of human behavior once you've worked in That's a right. restaurant and or so, a bar. You know, they know, uh, and, and and they really want to take care of you. Oh, my God. I, there are bartenders out there that are diligent about watching ladies' drinks. And, you know, like, we should never walk away from them. But but that doesn't mean assume that they're there to help you or that they're keeping an eye on you. No, no. But C- clearly state your needs, though. Absolutely. And, you know, don't walk away from a drink and go to the powder room. I huh? mean, don't do even that. with this on this date, dear Lord. No, don't, oh. don't, don't be doing that. So as we well, get through all of this doom and gloom and, oh, my God, the boogeyman is out to get us. 
Jesus Christ. I'm going to say, you know what? Trust your instincts. There's a little bit of risk in this, but that's kind of, but you can do that in a fun way. Well, the thing is this, if you see a red flag, if you do, you know, you, there's a little something that goes off in us, whether it's a ding a ding a ding a ding or your stomach takes a little, <sighs> we don't trust our instincts enough. <sighs> The instinct is there. Now it's yes. up to you to listen to it. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to go back to where we were when we began. Not everybody you meet online is going to be the love of your life. And it's not imperative that you make nice on everybody uh. that finds you attractive and wants to get to know you. You are in the driver's seat, ladies. You're in the driver's seat. You call. You're the commodity. You call the shots. Make sure that you're calling the shots in your favor on all levels. And I could, I can honestly say anyone that you are wooing that pushes back on your needs, that's the biggest red flag. They're allowed one clarifying question, and if they don't, if they insist on picking you up, if they don't understand, but they're not like that, goodbye. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to change that person's mind. They've disqualified themselves. Lois, I think this is such valuable information. Uh, I, I, I think the opposite was intended uh, to not scare people, but to embolden you on how to oh, that's all it is, ladies. That's go it. about this. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can find someone that you truly connect with. I, I, on one hand, have met an internet stalker who I have a restraining order out on the internet. And I have found the love of my life on the internet. The, the world abounds there. So the, the best you can do is look out for number one, your number one. Lois, you're number one in my book. Ah, uh, We well, want to thank our listeners for listening in. And Lois, thank you for all this wisdom. Well, I hope it I hope it sinks in and it's given in the it's given in the true sense of wanting you to be safe and to take care of yourself. We want to hear from you, our listener and viewer about your a a tip if you have one for taking you know taking care of yourself on the mm -hmm. online dating world or if you just have a nightmare date that you want to share absolutely uh, we'd love to hear from you there's a couple of different ways you can get in in touch with us we've heard from a lot of you recently and it's been so wonderful you can email us at silver and sensational at gmail.com you can also find us on social media on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Silver and Sensational. And if our friends are watching us on YouTube, what should they be doing right now, Lois? Well, first and foremost, you want to subscribe and like us and please share us so that your friends and contacts can subscribe and do hit the notification bell so you know when we are coming with a new episode, but just for your information, it's every Friday anyway. And you know what? Use that box with comments and let us know what you're thinking about this particular subject or any subject from any of our episodes. And so in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today. And Jessica, thank you for being who you are, my beautiful host and producer. And Again, be well, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful week until we meet again. Thank you, Lois. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much for watching us today. And please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode.